Starfield is a massive universe full of hundreds of planets, and today I'm going to show you some of the craziest worlds you can find in the game. Whether you are looking to build a powerful outpost with rare resources, farm XP and biomaterials with some extreme big game monster hunting, or just explore this beautiful universe Bethesda's created, these five planets should definitely be on your bucket list to go and check out. So without further ado, I'm going to do my best Sir David Attenborough impression and take you on a tour of five wild planets in Starfield. Our first stop is going to be Chiam 2 in the Chiam system. This system is over towards the middle right side of the universe map, over here further right but still right in between the Crix and Porima systems. This planet has a wide variety of biomes and is full of some exotic and really unique creatures. Delving into the volcanic uranium filled regions of this planet, you'll find a vast landscape of ash and volcanoes, but hidden in this rocky wasteland, packs of rock golems roam the rugged terrain. The larger creatures are called stonewalkers. These are territorial, rock-plated, bug-like aliens. They are armored and will become aggressive when approached, attacking with their sharp pincers and a unique acidic spit. Their primary resource dropped when harvesting them are hallucinogens. When attacking a stonewalker, they are often defended by packs of dog-like rock monsters called rockhound geophages. These packs seem to roam around and hunt with the Stonewalkers. They only really seem to attack when provoked or in defense of their larger bug-like counterparts. They primarily drop structural resources. While these two creatures can only be found in the volcanic regions, there is a peaceful neighbor that quietly floats in groups across the sky. Coral bucket filters can be found in every biome of this planet. They are very peaceful creatures that drop fiber when harvested, and because they're so peaceful and just float around minding their own business, you do feel really bad for hunting them. Large deposits of uranium, iridium, and plutonium can be found and mined here in the volcanic regions as well. Moving on to a new biome, we enter the chlorine-based coniferous and deciduous forests. These regions have dense forests, foliage, mountains, and are teeming with wildlife. Straight out of Ark Survival, the Ankylosaurus is a strong, armor-plated herbivore that can be found alone or in small groups. They are not hostile, but are very defensive and become aggressive if you approach them. I actually love what the developers did with the design of these guys, making them a lot more unique and alien-like than the typical representations we see of the dinosaurs here on Earth. I think the kaiju-styled head, massive jaws, and the six arachnid-like eyes make these guys just look so cool. Hunting these tanky giants will drop you the spice resource. However, you will not be the only hunter in these forests. Hunting in abundance in this region are massive packs of faceless, bug-like aliens called eggbacks. These massive, creepy insects have an almost cobra-like head but with insect mandibles and are covered in small egg sacs. This is a great location to come hunt and farm for XP, because when I say large packs, I mean sometimes 20 to 30 at a time. You will see big groups of 5 to 10 chasing the Ankylosauruses around, but the packs will often converge together on prey or when you begin to take aggro from a group. The primary resource dropped by eggbacks is polymer, so if you're ever in need of polymer, there is more than enough to be had here. These regions also contain massive deposits of the rare resource Xenon. Our last stop on this planet is the Argon-filled Arctic biome. This mountainous snow region is yet again filled with life and what is likely the best and most hilarious faces on the list. These are glow hands. They are extremely territorial, massive fish-like bugs with large flower-like structures growing out of their backs. These are the apex predators of this area. They travel in large groups and they hunt every single other creature in this region. Their primary resource dropped is the ornamental resource. But this is not the only derpy looking creature in this biome. The aggressive and hilarious looking cyclo lizards can often be found scurrying around the snow plains in small groups. These guys will attack you if you come anywhere near them, but they're impossible to take seriously. I mean, just look at this thing. It looks straight out of Futurama. The primary resource they drop is Nutrient. The last creature here, still incredibly derpy looking and rocking the slick back haircut, is the Egg Tail Filterer. These are peaceful, dinosaur looking lizards and they don't really do much except look shocked all the time. Look at that. Looks like someone yelled, I object, at a wedding. The next planet on the list is going to be Bardeen 3 in the Bardeen system. 
This system is located towards the top center of the universe map. It sits straight above and right in between the Cheyenne and Crick systems. This is an awesome planet for an outpost, as it has a lot of basic and essential resources, as well as an abundant supply of flora and fauna. This makes it a great resource farm, as well as a potential XP farm. So let's dive into the hills of Bardine 3 and take a look at what makes this system so exciting. From the moment you land, you will immediately notice a large presence of wildlife. The horn-faced herbivore is a common species that grazes in the hills here. They are a lobster-like dinosaur that drops sedative when harvested. However, these creatures are towards the bottom of the food chain on this planet, as the rest of the world is an absolute battleground for various packs of fauna. Dragon scavengers are a more reserved but formidable wolf-like lizard species that are covered in spikes and extremely venomous. Found in the hills and up in the arctic biomes, these creatures hunt in large groups and drop salient when harvested. Spider wasps are another reserved creature which travel in groups and have deceptively long range. When provoked, they can use their two incredibly long arms to attack and remain out of reach. Their primary resource drop is amino acids. These things are so creepy looking, I hate them so much. The top dogs in this region are the pack horse manders. These equus-like amphibians hit pretty hard and have a deadly toxic spit attack which they use to fight from a distance. These guys rarely lose fights to other species in this region, and they can pack a mean punch on you as well. The primary resource dropped by these guys is Polymer. Parrot hawks and click beetles can also be found in this region. Parrot hawks drop membranes, and click beetles drop sedatives. Our next biomes are the deciduous forests and mountain regions. These two regions are very similar in residence, but are absolute war zones between two main species, the exocrawler scorpions and the round face herbivores. The exocrawlers are straight out of my childhood nightmares as they look like the ultimate arachnid blend of a spider and a scorpion. They travel in groups, have a poisonous ranged attack, they drop the spice resource, and they have an endless beef with the round face herbivores. The round face herbivores are giant cricket-like creatures with tusks, and they can jump extremely high, travel in groups, drop the metabolic agent resource, also have ranged poison attacks, and hate the exocrawlers. These two groups are constantly warring with one another, and as far as I could tell, it's pretty evenly matched, and often it comes down to just who has the most numbers. These are fun regions to spend time in because you are constantly seeing these two groups just tee off with each other in large groups, or aggressively hunt each other down if they stray off from the pack. These little grabber grazer guys can also be farmed in the mountains and they drop the pigment resource. This plant has a lot of potential for outposts because of all the resources here and due to the sheer volume of creatures you can also get a lot of XP and fun wildlife interactions while exploring here as well. Our next planet is a lot different from the others on this list. Focalt 2 is located in the Focalt system, which is towards the bottom right of the universe map and can be seen down here and to the right of the Vali system. At first glance, Focalt 2 is a radioactive desert planet full of uranium, plutonium, dangerous sandstorms, and honestly, not much else. However, when you begin to explore the surface of this planet, you will find its hidden primordial fauna. Or perhaps, they'll find you. Under the surface of the planet, droves of massive cockroach creatures lurk using their unique tunneling abilities to jump out and surprise you. They are often in small groups and they will drop the nutrient resource when harvested. You are not the only prey these massive creeps are after, however. There is one more hidden monstrosity scattered throughout this desert and it is one of the most unique abilities I have seen in Starfield yet. The Maggot Maw Geophage is a horrific looking monster that has the ability to turn itself completely invisible. These monsters are the primary prey of the giant cockroaches, and they use their invisibility and tunneling abilities to avoid detection and escape danger. Now I was only able to find a few of these guys that were already hunted and not cloaked, and I honestly wish I hadn't. Definitely one of the ugliest faces on the list. These guys drop lubricant when harvested, which somehow makes them even more disgusting. Now I would not recommend this planet for an outpost unless you need a ton of radioactive materials because between the radiation, heat, sandstorms, and the creepy locals, Focalt 2 does not make for a very hospitable home. 
Our next stop on this planetary tour is the action-packed moon Katydid 1A in the Katydid system. This little moon orbits a red-ringed gas giant and can be located way down below and to the right of the Vali system here on the universe map. This moon has a few visually striking biomes that would make for some great outpost locations. Among these locations are volcanic regions, mountains, deciduous forests, tropical coastlines with blue palm trees, and wetlands where the red-ringed parent of this moon can be seen from the surface. Now what exactly is it that makes this pretty little moon so action-packed? These here are pack crickets. Maybe you've seen some other similar giant praying mantis creatures on other planets, but what makes these guys so unique and dangerous is... Oh! It breathes fire! These pack crickets travel in groups all over the planet, and between their lacerating pincers and fire breath, they can really pack a punch. They drop the pigment resource when harvested, and due to their sheer numbers and individual strength, they can make for a solid XP farm. Constantly under fire from these fire-breathing mantises... Oh brother, this guy stinks! ...are the Lacrea grazers. One of the more bizarre combinations I've seen in this game, the Lacreas look like a wacky mix of a seal, an earwig, and a horse. Not exactly sure what Bethesda was smoking that day in the office when they came up with these guys, but they dropped the metabolic agent resource and they make this interesting stuffy-nosed Tusken Raider sound when you get too close to them. <laughs> the last major player on this moon are the Cutterhead herbivores. These chameleon resembling wolf packs are a fairly neutral party in the overall pecking order here. They often will just mind their own business, but when provoked, they pull up in mass numbers and can hit pretty hard. These guys are also great for XP farming and they drop the cosmetic resource. There's lots to see and do here on Katydub 1A between the hunting and the sightseeing. However, one last fun perk of this moon is the low gravity, which can make for some pretty funny moments when fighting and exploring here. The rare mineral Yitterbite can also be mined on this planet. Our fifth and final planet on this planetary tour is by far one of my favorites on the list. Hawking 1 can be found in the Hawking system, which is located near the very bottom right of the universe map. This planet has gorgeous landscapes and some of the craziest and most dangerous wildlife I've seen yet. There are two main predators on this fauna abundant planet. The first is definitely one of the scariest faces we've seen yet. This horrifying mug belongs to the Thorn Mantis. This ghoulish praying mantis is covered in spikes that reflect melee damage back at you, and on top of that ability, they are also venomous. If you're brave enough to take these monsters on, you can harvest the pigment resource from them. As intimidating as the thorn mantis are, they are not at the top of the food chain here. That title belongs to one of the biggest and most dangerous monsters I've encountered in Starfield yet, the Hammersaur. The Hammersaur is an armor-plated, forearm T-Rex with the head of a hammerhead shark. These apex predators can also reflect melee damage back at you, and they have a unique ranged mouth attack. If you are able to bring these guys down, you can harvest the Analgesic resource, but be warned, these guys hit hard. I've seen them one-shot a fully armored Andrea multiple times, and I even died a couple of times while trying to get footage of them. The things I do for content. If you get any mods for this game that allow you to ride tame mounts around, these guys should definitely be at the top of your list. Now let's take a look at some of the other creatures that are on the menu here. The Marnock herbivores are an interesting pack animal here on Hawking. They are covered in sleek, almost transparent plates that stick out and armor them. These peaceful, long-necked dinosaurs can also reflect melee damage, and they drop the structural resource when harvested. The sloth geophages are also pack animals, and they can be found nearly everywhere on this planet. They are mostly passive creatures, but they will defend themselves if they are attacked. Unlike the other creatures we've encountered so far, they do not have any special abilities, but they will drop the spice resource. The last major fawn on this planet besides several small bugs is the pack crab. These are by far the weakest predators on this planet. They will sometimes get into fights with the Marnox while hunting, but they always get absolutely bullied. These giant pushovers drop solvent when harvested. Hawking 1 is a really cool planet that would make for a fun outpost and animal farm. You will however need a higher rank of planetary habitation as the planet itself has the occasional corrosive rainstorm that may or may not melt your skin. But that view though. While this is the final planet in this video, I did have a hard time narrowing down my various finds to just 5 planets and there are so many more to explore and share with you guys. 
So that being said, if you have any recommendations for planets I should check out for another video, feel free to drop the name down in the comments and it might just make the list on the next planet tour. I hope you all have enjoyed the video. Let me know down below which of these planets was your favorite, and as always, thank you all so much for watching.